Let's display important messages by adding custom signs to Minecraft. Alright, we found this back intelligence more. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be adding a custom signs to Minecraft over here for Fabric 120.2. And this time we will do so using a API, and that is going to be the Terraform API over here, mainly the Terraform Wood API. Now, the reason why we're using this is number one, we're gonna be using it anyway for boats, because uh, boats are actually not really possible without the API. They are kind of, but there's like a few tweaks that are just way easier with the wood API and also signs. Oh, you you will be amazed how easy signs are going to be with this custom wood API. It is absolutely freaking fantastic. We don't need to make any custom block entities or any sort of things like that. It's going to be very straightforward. So to add this, what we want to do is we want to go down here, fill the repositories and basically copy this maven right here. And of course, add this to our build.gradle file right here under our, actually under the repositories over here where we already have the maven for she Daniel. And then we just want to add this. And then under the dependencies, of course, want to add the dependency to this, which is going to be, as you can see, this one right here. So this is going to be mod implementation. And we can add that right here. So that's going to be the mod implementation for this. And then you want to duplicate this. You want to also include it. And the current version should be 7.0.1. And there you go. So that should basically be what we need here. The include is actually going to make it so that when you ship your jar file, right? So when we do the dot slash gradle w build, then it's actually going to include the Terraform wood API. So a person using your mod does not even need to download it separately. That's how freaking cool it is. And that's why this include here is very useful. And that's why, you know, using the API really is not that bad. Now, obviously, you are still dependent on the API. So if it's not yet updated, then, of course, you can't really update your mod. But I'm telling you, it is a small price to pay for the absolute amazingness that we're going to get here. So at the top right, once again, load Gradle changes. Or if that does not show up, open the Gradle tab and then reload all Gradle projects button. And there we go. It's going to build. And once again, just let this run through. It can take anywhere from a few seconds to a minute or so. And then once it's done, we can proceed from there. There we go. So build successful in 15 seconds. Absolutely freaking fantastic. It might take a little bit longer for you, but no worries at all. And now we are going to go and add our signs. Now those are going to be normal blocks. However, what I want is I want to copy here either the crop or something that is actually registering the block individually because the items are going to be registered after this manually. So this is going to be the standing underscore chestnut underscore sign. There you go. And of course, the name here is going to be the chestnut underscore standing underscore sign. There you go. And this is going to be a Terraform sign block. This one right here. Now, the first parameter of this is actually going to take in an identifier. And for this, I'm going to create all three identifiers over here. Those are going to be the textures because the Terraform blocks basically have the textures baked into them. So this is going to be a public static final identifier. And we're going to call this the chestnut underscore sign underscore texture equal to a new identifier of tutorial mod on mod ID and then entity slash signs slash chestnut. There you go. And we'll duplicate this two times because the second one is the chestnut hanging sign texture, where we will simply change this to signs slash hanging chestnut. Make sure that this is all written correctly. You can, of course, also double check this in the description below in the GitHub repository. So no worries at all. And then we have the chestnut hanging GUI sign texture. And that one is actually under textures slash GUI slash hanging underscore signs and then chestnut. There you go. So those are the three identifiers that we need. And there you go. If you have multiple different types of signs and multiple different wood types, then you would, of course, add those three again for the other type of wood type, right? That's why this is a chestnut. And if you had, for example, walnut, then you would also add the walnut for all three. Should be fairly self-explanatory here. And then here in the Terraform sign block, the first thing is going to be the chestnut sign texture. And then here we're going to copy the oak sign. That's quite important. And then we can duplicate this four times. The next one is going to be the wall chestnut sign making sure that we change this to the chestnut wall sign. And here, this is the Terraform wall sign block. It's going to have the same text right here. It's going to have the oak wall sign. There you go. That's quite important that we wanted to copy the correct one. Then we get the hanging sign. So this is going to be the hanging underscore chestnut underscore sign. And then here, the same thing goes chestnut underscore hanging, hanging sign. There you go. And then this is the Terraform hanging sign block 
first parameter is going to be the hanging sign texture. Second one is the hanging GUI sign texture, quite important. And of course here, once again, we want the oak hanging sign to copy. So make sure that all of those different things are changed. Very, very important to double, triple, quadruple check that. And then the last one is the wall hanging chestnut sign. And then here, the same thing, chestnut wall underscore hanging underscore sign, where this is going to be a terraform wall hanging sign block. The first one, once again, being the chestnut hanging sign texture, and the second parameter being the GUI sign texture, and then here, copying the oak wall hanging sign. There we freaking go, and now we got this done as well. Now, to probably do the data gen, what we're actually going to do is we're going to make a family. This is going to be a block family. So this is a little bit different from what we have before. So this is going to be a public static final block family over here. Not block families, but block family. There you go. This is the chestnut underscore family equal to block families dot register mod blocks dot chestnut planks. And then a dot sign, and the signs are going to be the mod blocks dot the standing sign as well as mod blocks dot wall sign. The group over here is going to be wooden, and then we have the unlock criterion of has underscore planks, and then a dot build. There you go. Now we are going to need this chestnut family over here to properly create the items for the normal sign. I don't know why this is the case, why this is kind of weird, but you know, we're going to be fine basically adding this. And yes, once again, of course, every time you have a different type of wood, you would want to add a different type of family because isn't that nice? <laughs> right. So in our mod model provider right here, what we're going to have is a quite an interesting thing. We want to find our planks, which is right here, and we want to get this. And we basically want to do the same thing that we've done right here with our Ruby pool. So we want to make a block state model generator, a block texture pool. This is going to be our chestnut pool equal to this. And instead of the registering a simple one, we want to register a cube all texture pool. There you go. And then we want to do chestnut pool dot family and then pass in mod blocks dot chestnut family right here. There you go. And that is actually all we need to do. So this is basically all we need to do because now it's going to take the signs here from the family and it's going to generate those signs, basically the item texture, because that's basically what we want to have here. That's as well as the particle texture. So that's also going to be generated. And then for the hanging sign, we actually want to go manually to the generate over here and just copy over the following. This is going to be mod items. And we're going to add this in a second mod hanging underscore chestnut underscore sign. This is going to be what we're going to add in just a second over here for the items. And then this is going to jump and this is going to just going to be a generated model over here. So I already, uh, you know, basically uh, spoiled it, right? So we have to, of course, go to the items because our blocks here have been calling registry.register and then blocks. So those have not been registered with a custom item. Therefore, we want to go to our mod items class and actually create those items as well. However, they are fairly straightforward, all things considered. So let's just go down here. And to be honest, we can take any of our other items. And this is going to be the chestnut underscore sign. And of course, changing the name here as well, chestnut underscore sign. This is a sign item. And the first parameter is actually going to be the fabric item settings. And we're going to say dot max count of 16, because that's usually what the signs have. And then we want to do mod blocks dot standing chestnut sign and mod blocks dot wall chestnut sign. There you go. Duplicate this. And then we have the hanging chestnut sign right here. There you go. And you can see this is now being used right here. This is exactly what we want. And then here's, of course, also this is the chestnut underscore hanging underscore sign. And this is a hanging sign item. There you go. And this time it's actually the other way around. So it's first the mod blocks and then the fabric settings for some reason. And of course, make sure to change those, those as well. The right? hanging chestnut sign and the hanging and the wall hanging chestnut sign. So that's quite important. Now, if you're like, this is quite complicated. You don't even know. If we wouldn't be using the API, this will be way more complicated. Basically, really, when you think about it, we have four blocks, right? We have a standing and a wall sign, and we have a hanging sign and a wall hanging sign. Those four blocks are then sort of, you know, those are then condensed into two different items, right? The standing and the wall sign both are the chestnut sign, while the hanging chestnut and the wall hanging chestnut are the hanging chestnut sign item. Nothing too crazy. Let's also add them to the item group over here. Otherwise, you might just forget that and we don't want to do that. That would be absolutely crazy. So that's with the chestnut sign and then the 
hanging chestnut sign. There you go. Awesome. Right. And then in the tutorial mode client, basically to finish this out, we want to call the sprite identifier registry right here. This is actually from Terraform MC, as you can see. So this is actually from the API uh, .instance .add identifier. We want to then make a new sprite identifier textured render layers dot sign atlas textures mod blocks dot chestnut sign texture duplicate this whole shebang and this is then the chestnut hanging sign texture there you go so those are the two lines that we want to add to the client very important as well and now we can proceed to the assets over here so of course the translation nothing too crazy there you go. We're just going to add them for all four of the blocks and then we get to the textures. So the textures are very specific. Now we've already basically made sure that those are correct, but let's just make sure that they are going to be correct. So in the entity folder, we want to create a new directory called signs. And then inside of there, we want to get the first chestnut PNG. So that's going to be this one right here. That's the normal chestnut PNG for the basic sign. And inside of the science folder, again, new directory called hanging. And then inside of there, another PNG called chestnut. However, this one looks like this. So this is for the hanging signs. Very important. And then in the GUI, so this is textures, GUI, we want another new folder called the hanging underscore signs. And then here, we also want to get the chestnut PNG. So that's going to be this one right here, the chestnut PNG. And you can see that one looks like this. So that's going to be the GUI or GUI for it. And those are going to be the different textures. So you have two entity textures and one PNG over here for the GUI, which is, of course, exactly the different identifiers that we've specified right here. So that should be fairly self-explanatory over here as well. And with that, we have everything that we're going to need. So we can go ahead and run the data gen over here. And then we should be able to see our textures in the game. If there's no issues, of course, but I'm pretty sure that this should be pretty much what we need to do. Wait, what am I saying? Everything is done here. Of course not. We have item textures still. So this is going to be the chestnut sign and the chestnut hanging sign. So those are, of course, going to be these two over here. We can't miss those. So now we can jump into the game and see if it works. All right, friends, us back in Minecraft. As you can see, these signs have been added. So let's take a look. There we freaking go. We can put it here. We can also put it here. That is pretty awesome. And then the hanging sign, you know, from the top or from the wall over here. There you freaking go. So everything here working, you can even edit them. So that is pretty freaking cool that you can like actually do that. So so you could say sub to Calm Joe, for example. You know, you, you could say that if you wanted to. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. That is going to be custom signs added to Minecraft. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And next time in this video, we're going to add custom boats as well. Hope to see you there. So yeah.